Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Hmm, indeed. How much is your empathy? When you hear that someone has been killed, do you say the usual, hey, yao, may their soul rest in peace and move on? Do you feel that it is none of your business and that it will never happen to you? Or do you feel the pain and imagine that you could be the next victim and think of ways to ensure that you do not become a victim? I've always marveled at people's level of empathy and how some freely give of that empathy while some hoard their empathy and make it a very expensive one. Those who are unable to relate to the pains of others, who are oblivious to the fact that they can be the next victim and are only able to feel empathy when they become victims or their loved ones become victims, have the most expensive empathy. Their personal pain is the prize for their empathy. And sadly, we have a lot of such people. Nigeria is full of people with the most expensive empathy. And so we have been unable to feel the pain of one another. We have not been able to put ourselves in the shoes of those who are being hurt. We have looked the other way and only felt pain when it happened to us. And at that moment, others refused to feel the pain with us also. This has continuously favored government which has been allowed enabling environment to keep abdicating its responsibility. And also the terrorists, bandits, kidnappers, and killer head, head, headsmen who have been emboldened to attack more people by our inability to feel one another's pain and have each other's back. The killers are in competition to see who can gruesomely kill more citizens than the others. Each killing is more petrifying and paralyzing than the last one ahead of, but sadly, has not been enough to awaken our empathy to resolve, to resolve that when any one of us is killed, then it means all of us are killed and we'll all come out to ensure that not one of us is killed again. What we tend to do is to pray to God that we never fall victim and move on. How do people not realize that the last victim also thought that he or she wouldn't be victim? How do people not realize that priests, imams, and everyone are becoming victims by the day? And that even as we pray to God to keep us safe, we also have to act to keep ourselves safe and feel the pain of another before the pain gets to us. Do we need to teach one another empathy? A nation without empathy is a nation that has sentenced itself to chaos. That is sadly where we are. We have leaders who have no empathy for the people they govern, who do not feel their pain and put themselves in their shoes and wish to get them to replace better than where they were. Leaders who will spend billions on their well-being and give out 5,000 to household when that said amount can barely do anything. Leaders who, who will assess COVID-19 vaccines abroad without a single thought for the citizens they govern, who do not have access to the vaccines, and will flaunt it in the face of those citizens. Lack of empathy has not helped us as individuals. Neither has it helped us as a nation. We must ensure we feel for another what we feel for ourselves. We must feel the pain of one another and take it as our pain 
and not wait for the pain to happen to us before we feel it. We must make our empathy extremely cheap. We must give it free of charge. We must empathize and also ensure adequate precaution is taken for any tragedy not to happen again. That way, we are watching out for ourselves. For we must always remember that tomorrow's victims are today's survivors. And you give us time to dissect this one because uh, we also <laughs> gave you time, you know, to chew on um, your uh, advocacy. Um, and this it, reminds this me of uh, one. a friend's um, <clears throat> older sister that just died, and then when she narrated what happened to me, how they got to the to the hospital after calling the hospital, they got there. The doctor was so laid back, like a as if you know, he not consigned me. And you know, a minor ailment that would have just that would have been treated and attended to, eventually she ended up dying in the ambulance that brought her to the clinic. And you know, so it is replicated, you know, in almost all facets of our national life, mm -hmm. from government to churches that we talked about earlier, to hospitals to even lawyers like us. You know, everywhere it is the same thing. No empathy. So you're ready to cheat the next man. Meanwhile, you're quick to rush to a religious center and believing that it is not yours. And like you said, tomorrow's victims are today's survivor. And so if we all don't do something about it, you know, we might just discover that um, it is closer than we think it is. How much is your empathy question that is um, important for all of us to, to, to answer? So this is why I talk about leaders with empathy. Because if you have empathy, you will not think of giving people 5,000 Naira empowerment scheme or 10,000 Naira or 15,000 Naira. If you have empathy, you know that's not going to take them anywhere. If you have empathy, you will listen to the people say, look, there's a problem with our security. We have a security challenge in Nigeria today and you need to do something about it. In other words, you put yourself in our shoes, you're cocooned. In, in behind the fortress yeah. that Aso Rock is, uh, and the ministers and all the people, you know, those in governance generally. But we are the people who move from one point to the other. We're saying this is what is happening. Empathetic yeah. leaders will do something mm -hmm. meaningful, take actionable steps That's true. to get it resolved. Yeah, empathy, um, the issue of empathy actually cuts right across from leadership down to the followership. And I said two examples. There was a lady that was mobbed on the Koyi Link Bridge recently, jogging in the morning. The attackers slashed her tie. All her face was, you know, messed with, seriously. The funny thing was that Nigerians were driving past, some were going past, nobody waited to help. She was dead. That wasn't president, that wasn't governor. That was ordinary Nigerians who could have done something but refused to do anything. You have a, another situation in which an IT guy was killed at Jibo very recently. And he was shot. The police were there. The, the police story was that, oh, when they got there, he was already dead. And my question, which so many people are also asking, is how did you know that he was dead? Somebody had been shot. He's lying on the ground. Yeah. Your duty is to help, provide whatever you can do right there and then. But they said it was, uh, that it was already, they assumed it was dead. And, oh, and, and nobody took to the right step. And <clears throat> the, the, the young man passed, passed, passed on. So we need to call on our empathy and be able to, to be able to help other people. You say we need to call on our empathy <laughs> like he's one. Uh, God is, he, like he feel like said it's not, he's not living <laughs> with us any longer. <laughs> if there's any institution, so to speak, that uh, I think is even more guilty of... Uh, the lack of empathy or whatever. I think it's even the government itself. Look at some of the social programs that the uh, government is handling and see how much they are dishing out to the public or to individuals in respect of uh, whatever they call it, whether it is palliatives or whatever. 10,000, 20,000. What would you do with that? What difference, what business can that generate? Even if I were to be a Goro seller, could I not sell on the street? For Christ's no, sake. No, they give you in now to sell. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, if we all have empathy for our people and our country, nobody would steal money for soldiers in the war front. And in fact, it is sad. Well, I'm um, next after this break, and I think we shall talk more on this.